G'day and welcome back. Today I've got something a bit different. Uh, this is a gramophone and I believe it's from the early 30s. A friend of mine at the radio club said uh, he knew I was an expert on doing turntables. I've done three of them. So he said, can you have a look at my turntable? I said, sure, sure, bring it in. So a couple of months later he bought this in and I was expecting an automatic BSR changer or something, something modern, but this is what it turned out to be. So always up for a challenge. So let's have a look. I'll get this turntable off. I haven't... Uh, got a lot of information on this. I've got some information I read a while ago. I'll have a look at the motor in a minute. It's got some sort of governor on it by the look of it, 78. And then you can go slow or fast. And it's got a locking adjustment here too. So I guess you would set the platter speed to 78, center that on 78 and then lock it in and then it gives you a bit of even uh, adjustment either side of 78. Here's the little kicker or striker arm and that would hit this lever and turn off the record when it got to the end. That's uh, got a little pin there. It looks like it had something on it, like a wheel or something. I guess you would arm this mechanism with the tone arm by pulling the tone arm sideways. That would engage the switch and then the record would start moving across and move these two levers. They would eventually hit the uh, little striker there and disengage and turn the record off and the arm would just stay on top of the record. Now this thing over here looks like a brake. So that, that looks feels like a bit of leather and uh, yeah, it's flattened off on that side. There's a couple of adjustments there, one there and one over here, I guess they're for the tone arm interaction. The plate that it's mounted on is nice, it's a bit of steel that's been finished in a bronze finish. Yeah, it looks good, that'll clean up okay. A little bit of rust there, we can get rid of that. Now here's the cartridge too, so that's for 78, it takes needles. I doubt very much that'll work. I've just released the wire holding that cartridge down and there's the bottom of it. So it's going to be interesting to see what's in there. Uh, with that tone arm release we should be able to trigger this mechanism. There it goes. If I move this over here we should get some sort of, yeah there it goes there, creeping it along. Having moved that over this hasn't moved. So with the mechanism arm now that comes across as the record goes across. I think it should be pulling this arm over, it's not moving it. Yeah, that would put that over into the uh, line with the little striker there. So that looks like a friction adjustment there. So that needs to be adjusted. So once that's in line, the, the record would spin around and kick it out. So whatever the tensioning mechanism in there needs to be adjusted to just put some more tension on it. But I'm going to pull all this apart, clean it all up and lubricate it, put it back together, make sure it's working. This little brass ring here, it's insulated from here and it just goes in and hits two leaf contacts. So when you arm it, there's your voltage sitting right there. See ya. Now here's the radio that goes with it. From what I can tell, it's a Montgomery Ward 62158. I'm not sure how I've come up with that because as I said, I did this a few months ago, so I'm not sure why I think it's that, but that's the information I've got. Nice little dial on there, very fancy looking, uh, very fancy looking uh, pointer there. And it's got uh, volume and tone. So I guess they turn as you do something. Oh, that's the wave switch, I think. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, volume's over here. Yeah, very cute. It's a seven valve super heterodyne. Now Montgomery Ward, as far as I know, was a department store in North America somewhere. I'll have to check that up. Uh, so I'm not sure if it is 110 volts or it's the Aussie 240. So that's something I need to check before I do too much with this. Somebody's fitted a 240 volt plug on it, so I'm going to guess it is 240, but I will check before I put power on it. Okay, I'll turn it over. We'll have a look underneath. Oh. I didn't know they were there. Okay. There's all the valves and cans off the radio. I didn't even consider them. Yeah, okay. All right. Here's the motor. That's uh, quite a beast. Now it's got a little decal on the side here, or a plate. It says it's a Garrard type 202A induction motor. It's 100 to 250 volts. Made in England. Can't read the cycles. And a serial number. Now just looking at it now, there's a terminal block there with two terminals on it. Um, I assume that's the wire going off to the switch. 
that's going off to the motor so I guess your two live wires would go on here and go through the switch and then to the motor uh, here's the cap on the end of the motor uh, here's the power going in uh, there's some tappings here for different voltages these wires are going off inside the motor and you would move them up and down to the different voltages this one says 200 to 250 and this is 100 to 130 so the motor's got two windings in it and this top one here will be in series the high voltage one uh, the bottom one they will parallel them and you'll get the same voltage through each winding regardless of where you have the tapping now i do have a little bit of info on the motor uh, it strikes me that you would buy this aftermarket and replace your spring wound um, you know gramophone motor uh, maybe manufacturers fitted it i don't know it seems to be that it was sold aftermarket there's information here on fitting it and it uh, comes with a template so you put that on your old deck and drill out the holes to mount the motor so that's why I think it's aftermarket uh, it says frequency it'll run on 50 and 60 cycles uh, voltage it'll run on the 200 to 250 or the 100 to 130 uh, the speed regulation we looked at that lever and uh, it actually says here about adjusting it as I said you set it on 78 and then do a final adjustment there's a bit here on maintenance it says the the rotor bearings are lubricated with two grease caps immediately accessible on removal of turntable and then it's got talking about uh, main spindle bearings uh, felt rings saturated in oil uh, yes yeah, so you've got to keep them lubricated here's an article here from the gramophone which i assume was a magazine april 1932 and it's kind of doing a review on the the motor and uh, doesn't get hot runs well yeah so that's interesting Here's the dimensions for the plate that this thing would have come on aftermarket. And you cut out your old uh, gramophone top there and put this in and screw it down as an assembly. Wire it up, you're done. Now there's all the holes here that you would drill. Well there's that um, automatic mechanism there. So uh, it does have something on that little pin that's missing at the moment. I'm not sure what's on there. And there's that brake pad I looked at. And there's the little um, spring leaf contacts that this bush fits into. I've also got the circuit diagram and some instructions there for the radio and uh, all the uh, values there. What I thought I might do is connect the pickup for the record player to a set of speakers and just see if I can get any noise out of it. I've got uh, I've got some speakers here and I've just got a bit of hookup wire in the uh, cartridge there to see if it'll work. Uh, I'll connect the wires up. Now I'm hoping these aren't shorted out inside. All right, let's see if it works. Wow. It's working. That's amazing. So 90 year old cartridge may have been replaced later on, but still be very old. That is really good if we can retain that cartridge head. Uh, that'll be fantastic. Wow, that's encouraging. I really didn't expect that cartridge to work. Anyway, tomorrow I'm going to pull the motor apart as far as I need to, to determine what needs to be done, whether it needs to be oiled, greased, or what, what goes on inside clean it up put some new wires on as required and uh, make it safe then we can clean up this base and uh, polish it whatever needs to be done uh, this morning i will take this motor off there's not much to it i'll need to disconnect the wire there and there's just three uh, nuts and bolts holding it on and it should come away i think so i'll just flip it over and i'll disconnect this wire so here's the wires coming through to the switch so just a matter of removing that screw i hope Yeah, there's just some connectors there. And there's also an earth strap here, I'll get rid of that. Okay, there's the earth strap off. To get the motor off, I just release those uh, three nuts. I've loosened the nuts off, but I think there's a lever on the top side that's holding it up. These, this isn't coming off because the rubber's melted a lot. I've forgotten about this governor lever. I put a little, a uh, couple of pencil marks there to uh, mark it. I don't know if it makes any difference. All right, that should come off now. I'll just lever it up, maybe. Oh, it's stuck. There we go. Uh, 
All right, well, here's the motor. Uh, so have a look around. Uh, it says in the manual that it's got a felt seal up here or felt something or other that you can oil, but clean that off there. You can't see anything there. It also says the motor spindle's got grease cups on it and there's no grease cup there. And there's certainly nothing there. Um, there is a hole here which lines up with the bearing, so maybe that is one of them. And there's a blank here that lines up with this bearing, and so maybe they've deleted the grease cups. So I was kind of thinking I may not need to pull it apart if it can just be greased externally, but I think I'll have to uh, pull it apart to some degree. Now a lot of the times uh, under these plates they put on, they used to put a hole for servicing. I'll take the plate off just for keep it uh, keep it safe. No, <laughs> <Look at> that. <laughs> well, what do you know? There is one. You can you can see the governor in there. There it is. Well, there there's the there's the governor, and of course it's flyweights as as I expected. But I'm not quite sure how it actually affects the speed of the motor. There's a little felt pusher on a ring there which uh, makes sense but as I say I don't know how it's affecting the speed normally you adjust the speed of an induction motor with a frequency so I'm not sure how that's going to work anyway we'll have a look in a minute now I'm going to take the end cap off the motor I think that's a good place to start uh, first I need to get off these uh, the uh, wires that are going into the motor That little ball's not coming out, that little come out when I don't want it to. I'm going to take this end cap off, I forgot to turn the camera on. So I took the end cap off and the stator and the rotor all came out as one. Here's the rotor, that looks good, uh, shaft is good condition as well. The governor here is very simple, of course, so they just fly out the faster the motor goes and pulls that disc up. Now I was expecting something a bit high tech, but I think it's pretty low tech. Alright, inside the case here, there's the governor assembly. Uh, all it has is two, I think they look like felt pads, uh, that rub on that disc on the governor and maintain the speed. It's a pretty low-tech solution. So if you rotate that speed lever up there, uh, all you're doing is pushing harder or softer on the disc. And as the speed gets too high in the motor, it starts pushing back on the pads, so you get roughly your 78 RPM. And this must be an improved version on the original that's got oil light bearings in it instead of the greased bearings. So they'll just need cleaning and... Uh, Bit of re-lubing and they'll be fine. Uh, the stator windings look good on this side. Uh, I'll have to take it off. There's two screws there and uh, that will come out. Uh, I need to replace the insulation on these wires. Now before I take this out I will mark this so it goes back in exactly the same place. So there's the, uh, the old grease point I think. Right, that'll be okay. I will replace the insulation on these wires and uh, make them like new again. I just want to check the continuity. There shouldn't be anything there. No. Should be something on that one, I would think. So 360 and... Oops. Should be 360 there. Oops. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to take the main drive shaft out. Uh, that's got bearings top and bottom too. They probably need to be uh, serviced in some way or another. So I'll just take this striker off. Now this is the top side of that shaft, so I'll take these off and I should be able to just pull that shaft out. So I'll just try and knock it out, I think. There we go. This one has got a felt uh, washer in there. 
I was a bit silly there. I knocked that inside the bearing. I shouldn't have done that. It's all dirty there. I should have cleaned that up first. So let me do that and then I'll push it through. Here it is. That's better. All right, that just came out easily now. All right. Now the teeth here have got a little bit of a mark on them, I think, but it looks like it's got some sort of anti-friction uh, coating on there. Yeah. I'll take this um, end bearing out as well. I don't know if that's got a little ball in it, but be careful I don't lose it. Oops. Oh. oh, it doesn't screw in at all. I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. It looks like it's got a, a scented bronze uh, oil light bearing in the end there, just pushed into this brass fitting. The next thing I need to look at is the governor, because um, I need to look at these brake blocks here and see what needs to be done. There's a cam at the back that goes through to the shaft, but I don't think I need to take that out. There's a screw here that's holding all this together. It's got a big spring behind it, so I don't, I'm going to lose that for sure. There's a screw access hole there, so that lines up with the screw. And you simply undo it. Now, of course, this is going to spring everywhere. It doesn't seem too strong. That's right. Uh, so that's the little brake assembly. Um, these pads aren't too bad. I reckon I can just sort of clean them up a bit and put them back in. I think they'll be fine. Here's most of the parts. Here's the rotor and the other shaft are out of shot. Um, I've got to clean all this up. I'll clean the case up, this up. Uh, the felt pads here, I will re-soak those in oil to get them full again. The oil light bearings, I will just soak in some uh, oil just overnight. I'm not going to get too concerned about them because the shaft when it came out had a good coat of oil on it. So I don't think they're dry. Uh, I have to re-insulate the wires on the windings here. Yeah, so not too much to do. As I say, cleaning, oiling, put it back together. I've spent a fair bit of time cleaning everything up here. I ended up painting the case. It uh, was uh, very ordinary inside there once I cleaned it up, a bit of rust. So I cleaned it all off and then painted it. And I cleaned up these aluminium pieces here, the little Bakelite voltage selector there. I lubricated all the bearings and let them sit overnight, uh, this one too. And I re-oiled all the uh, felt pieces as well. I also remade all the leads. Um, I was going to try and use the old ones, but they're very crisp inside, so I thought it'd be better to make new ones. All the nuts, bolts and screws are accounted for, so I'm going to start putting it together.
Here's the motor all finished now and it went together quite easily so uh, I think it'll be okay when we test it. As you can see I've got a few parts left over. Oh hang on that's not it. No, there they are. They go on the earth point on the deck. Alright I'm going to give the motor a bit of a test drive. I've connected it to the power using some clip leads. I'll turn it on. I've got the brake off. There it goes. And I should be able to adjust the speed by using the brake here. I think that's doing it there. Whoa. Yeah, so definitely affecting it. Doesn't seem a very good way of it controlling the speed, but that's what they had. Alright, that's good. That's working properly. In the morning I'll clean the deck up and all the little levers and uh, get them working properly. Good morning, I came back. I'm going to work on this deck this morning. There's a couple of things to do. First it's got to be cleaned of course. And I want to restore this mechanism here. Uh, now this is in pretty good condition. It's rusted under the plating so that needs to be cleared away. And I think I'm going to have to remove it. It's not going to clean up. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to have to take it off. It's actually cleaning up okay. Uh, actually, it's kind of cleaning up. Hmm, it's going to clean up okay. Um, anyway, I'm going to take it all apart. I can't clean it like that. Alright, well that all came off okay. Uh, I'll clean this off. This has got a little bit of rust on it, which is a bit of a worry. No, that's cleaning up beautifully. Fantastic. Alright. At this stage I'm going to leave the tone arm on here and just clean around it. I want to see if this uh, head actually sounds any good. It works, but whether it sounds any good is another thing. The wires need to be replaced in there, so I'll test it first and then I'll overhaul this part after I determine that it's going to work. Yeah, I'm not too bright here. I thought I had the camera on record, but it was on pause. Uh, I've been cleaning this with just uh, spray and wipe, so it's coming off okay. Uh, it looks like it's got a, a spray-on tint on it or something. I don't know. I thought it would be plated, but I don't think it is. Because you can see here it's coming off. It's around here it's coming off. Anyway, so I'm just going to use spray and wipe. I'm not going to use anything more aggressive than that. And uh, it is cleaning up okay. Uh, once the platter's on here, of course, you can just see that. Uh, I've cleaned the bottom as well with some spray and wipe. That's not too bad. All that's left to do now is clean up these parts here. So I'll just uh, use a brush, soft brush, and uh, some solvent. And that should take all of that off, I hope. This is solvent. This is a soft nylon brush. So let's see if it does take it off. If, it, if this doesn't work, I'll put it in a bit of phosphoric acid. That'll take the rust off and leave us with a... Nice shiny finish, I hope. All right, well, they're, they're coming up okay, so I'll just keep working on these. I'll do the rest of them, and uh, we'll come back and have a look and see how they come up. I've cleaned up all the parts, and, yeah, they've come up pretty good, so uh, I can just try and reassemble it. Um, so I know that one was there, because that hung over there. There's a... It's got to go there, I guess. Uh, this one was here, so that hooks into that. That one was for the switch that goes here, and it's only got one left. Um, well, that's the brake. That's where the brake was to stop the platter. So there's a hole there, so it must go up here somewhere. In there. Yeah, that'll be it. It locks that. Alright, I think that's it. So all I need to do is put all the little pivots back. I'll put a little bit of grease on some of these points. I don't want to oil it too much because it'll just attract dust, but uh, things like this can have a little bit of lubrication on them.
that's all working now so I can go and mount the motor back in I think I've come back inside to my servicing desk um, I've got some grommets here which I'm going to use as the rubber mounts uh, all they had was a, a rubber washer either side quite thick and uh, the bolt went through there's nothing in the hole there so uh, it keeps the bolt away from touching the, uh, uh, the the metal case here if there's too much noise comes back from the motor into the plate on the gram I'll have to think of something else the motors all mounted now that looks pretty good I'll just pass these wires through and I'll connect them to the switch I'm just putting the speed control lever on here. I'll have to adjust that later. Uh, okay, I'm all set up. I've put power on. The motor's mounted in there. Now I should be able to arm this. There it goes. Now that little bobbin's gone in there to create the circuit. I've put a little grommet on here. This is supposed to have some sort of... I don't know what it is. I, I might print something and put it on there. I've got a grommet on there and I think it's a bit small, but we'll see how it works now the way I understand this thing is that this comes in slowly as it reads the record and eventually it'll start pushing that lever in there it goes now because it's going really slow on the record that should start pushing that away like that now when it gets to the track that leads out of the grooves rapidly it should just plunge that in like that and turn it off so that seems to be how it works as far as I can work it out. I've got my uh, record speed app here. I'll start that and start the play. We'll see how close to 78 we are. Whoa, that's a bit high. I'll just move the speed control lever down closer to 78. Okay, we ended up with 80.52. I think the brake is also rubbing. Try it again. Okay. So 79.43, so it's not bad. Um, I'll adjust this uh, lever a bit. Now there's a little brake block here. I'm going to take that off. I might be rubbing on that. If it's not, I want to know what it is rubbing on. So I'll just move that over to... Oops. I've put it on 79 there. And put the platter back on. So I'll just turn it down a bit. Oh, it's going to go the wrong way, isn't it? That's slow. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. Right, so I need to put it there. All right, this time I'll adjust it the correct direction. So I'll put that on 78 and lock that in. I just raced down to the leather shop near us in Mount Cotton and uh, got a piece of, I don't know, it's 3 16th thick uh, leather, about 5 mil. And I've cut it out and made a little break. The old one was just breaking up, the, uh, the material was so dry. And while I was there, I made up a little leather bumper here. Uh, I had a grommet there before, so I've put a little leather bumper on there. And I imagine that's what was there originally. The other thing is I ordered some needles, some stylus or gramophone needles. So they arrived as well, so I'm going to try one out. How are you supposed to get these in here? I can't even find a hole for it. Goodness me. There it is. These things are sharp. I thought they'd be sort of blunt on the end. They are sticking your finger sharp. All right. I'll put the platter on. Um, now, I've got to get this brake out of the way. I've mucked around trying to adjust that brake for a little while. So 
I've got it in the right place I think so I've got it out of there while I get the platter on now I've got to try and uh, reset it there it goes all right I'll try a record out on it um, here's a little number I thought we might enjoy a mouth organ solo now I've got some computer speakers set up here these won't come out very well but it'll show uh, how capable the cartridge is so if I start it up Oh, missed the groove. I'm interested to see if this cuts out when it gets into that inner groove there. I reckon it'll work. That's quite a good mouth organ player there. That could, that could be top 40, that. Alright, let's see if it cuts out. Beautiful. And the brake came on and stopped it immediately. I've put my phone on here with the speed app. I want to check the speed and just make sure it's the same when it's got a record playing and the needle dragging on it. Uh, I've changed to a 12 inch record because I couldn't get both on at the same time the needle and the and the little cradle there so I'll start the app and I'll start the record player dying a slow death there uh, 78.1 so I will move this over a bit it's one degree one division out so I'll move that over and it'll be uh, perfect wait for it yeah works every time fantastic that's just great fun I'll just adjust this lever. I mean, it's hardly worth worrying about, but we'll do it anyway. There you go. So that's spot on 78 now. Um, now, what I didn't say was this cartridge is working fine. It sounds good, even those little tiny speakers. So I'll, I'll try it on a real radio a bit later on. Uh, but uh, yeah, they seem to be working fine. Uh, so the next thing to do is this tone arm. I need to remove it, clean it up, and replace the wiring in the center of it. Uh, today I'm going to have a look at this tone arm, so I'll turn it over and get to the screws on the bottom. Uh, it appears to be just three screws, and then remove these terminals here. I've just realised this lever is not going to let me get this off. I might have to turn it over again and look at the top. Or right, we're on top again, and look, there's a little screw hidden in the back there. So I guess that'll get rid of the lever. I'll take it right out. There we go. I've taken that screw out, but I still can't get it to come off. It just rotates there, and I can't pull that out. Um, I'll just try and lever that up a bit. So I'll just try and... Is that working? All right, that seems to be coming up, so uh, I'll bet there's little ball bearings in there. I might come and put some penetrant on this and see if that'll help it come off. It's all rusty in there, so that may be it. It may also have been damaged from the grub screw. I've got a bit of penetrine in there. I'll see if that helps it. It's loosened it off. There it goes. Now it's just got the wires holding it now. Whoa. Right. I think I've worked it out now. This uh, here is attached to the plate and that Bakelite mount will just come away when I undo these screws. There 
Yeah, so that's attached to the plate. There's probably a nut underneath. No, uh, there's no nut. It's been riveted on. So I'll have to leave that on there. And there's the arm there and some pretty old wiring. And it's just falling apart. And it looks like the head will just come out here. It's got a little board there with solder points on it. So I'll take the screw out. It's got little ball bearings in there. I guess they're spring loaded. Yeah. So if I twist it, it should come out. There we go. This ball's going to fly out. No. I'll cut the wires off at this stage. Okay. I'm going to go and clean all this up. I'll give the head a polish and clean up all the corrosion bits in there. There's a pivot pin here for the arm and it used to have a grub screw in there I'd assume so that should push out and that'll make it easier to get the wires out. Oh, that's easy. Alright, well, I'll go and clean that up as well. I'm going to try and put it back together. I cleaned that up, I just polished that a bit and brassoed the head. Uh, this I use a bit of brass on just to try and get the colour back that it's, it's discoloured so I can't do anything with that. What I did find was, I think there's a wire broken here. There's two two wires coming up to these terminals here, and this one here looks like it's broken off. Yeah. So I have to reattach that. See if I can find the wire and reattach it. Ah. Aha. Uh -huh. It's actually a magnet. It's a magnetic pickup. I didn't no, they even had them back then. That's the wire that's broken, so it's this one here. And this stuff will be very, very hard. Now I'm scared to try and pull this out. I'll put my finger there. I don't want to pull it out of the coil. There we go. I need to try and get some of this wire back. I'll try doing this. Yikes. Uh, what I've done is made a little coil, I've put the wire inside it and just bend it around on the outside as well. We'll see if that'll pick it up. And I've just stretched out a bit of uh, heat shrink so it'll go with a big blob there. All right, I'll just try and thread this back in. There we go. That's why it still works. It's a, a magnetic cartridge. I assumed it would be ceramic or something. All right. I'll just solder these uh, wires on it. I've used a fairly hefty wire here. Uh, but that's what they had, so I'll stick to the same gauge. Alright, so that'll go there. I've got some Vitaflex 3mm uh, sleeving here. I'll try putting that in there. I think it'll fit through those holes. I'll try and put this keeper back in if I can. It doesn't need it, but just to keep it original looking that'll do I don't think I can get it any further with that there we go no there you go let's put a bit of heat shrink here they had something like that so I'll just copy it All right, just put this pin back. I'll see if I can find a grub screw to put in there. All right, that's done. I'll go and uh, work on the base and then I can reassemble it. I've cleaned everything up and uh, it's come up very nice. I can assemble all this here and then just mount this on the plate. Uh, when I pulled it apart, I didn't do it the way I should have, uh, but I know how it works now. I'll put a bit of oil in here. I wasn't quite sure whether to or not, but I'll just put a little bit in there. And then there was a shim. 
another shim. I'll put a touch of oil in here just for fun. So there you go on there. Then there's another shim. We put that up there. And that should go in there. And the grub screw goes in there. Now I did have this pin in before, I took it out again. I said I was going to find a grub screw from here, but if I do, then it won't be able to pivot because it'll lock the shaft and the shaft is tight in this uh, casting here. So I'm just going to leave it as it was. I'm just going to poke the wires through. There's a little earth strap there. And then that goes there. All right. I've put the tab washers on there, so I will uh, trim these and solder them on there. I think that was on one of those. I can't, I'll have to have a look at the video and see where it was. All right, I've tinned the wires. I'll just solder them into the little tabs here. So I think I missed tinning that one. That one's not tin. And I'll tin it there. There's another ground wire from the motor to the deck, so I'll put that on. Now the record player is up the right way. I've put a new cover on the platter. The old one had a tear in it. So I'm going to wrap this video up now. This will be part one. Uh, next week we'll have a look at the chassis and see if I can get the radio to work. And if it does, I can marry the two together. We'll see what it sounds like then. This is more my line of work doing mechanical stuff. So I enjoyed rebuilding the motor. And this mechanism here is intriguing. It was really well done. The fact that the cartridge worked, yeah, it was just terrific. So I hope you enjoyed watching me do this. And I hope you can join me next week for part two of my Garrard radio adventure. So I think to finish the video off, uh, we'll enjoy the musical stylings of PC Hopkinson on his harmonica.